hello okay okay great okay so let us begin then i am i am devojit i am a phd student in the department of physics of iit kanpur i am taking this live sessions on every tuesday of the nbtel course calculus of one real variable and in this live session we will talk about uh, and we will discuss the problems of assignment 6 uh, which is in week 6 and so as i was saying i will be discussing the previous assignment uh, the assignment which was given in the previous run of this course and we will be discussing the sixth assignment okay so let us begin so this is the first problem of today where we have to find the value of the improper integral and the integral is 1 to infinity ln x by x square dx this is a improper integral because one of the limit is infinity okay so we can write it like this i and since this is a improper integral we can also write it like this limit m tends to m tends to infinity and then the integration will go from 1 to m ln x by x square dx so we will evaluate this integral here and then we will put the limit m tends to infinity okay so we can start with that here let us do this simple substitution that y is ln x or x equal to e to the power y then dy will be dx over x or dx will be x dy then if we put this values here of course the limits will be changed and i will do that in in a moment okay so ln x we can write at write it as y dx as x dy and we will have x square at the denominator and they will get cancelled out so this will be y dy and x i can write it as e to the power y so this finally becomes y e to the power minus y dy and when x is equal to 1 y is ln 1 that is 0 and x is equal to m since we have changed the limit here from 1 to m y will be ln m so the limits will be changed here 0 to ln m okay so we can do this integration simply using by parts so let us do that we will worry about the limits later so this will be y to the power minus y and we will have a minus sign here minus d dy of y integration of e to the power minus y dy and another dy 
So the first term I have already integrated it out. So this will be one. And this will again give minus e to the power y dy. So this will be plus e to the power minus y dy. It should be minus y e to the power minus y. minus e to the power minus y okay so this is the integration and now we have to put the limits so this is from 0 to ln n So, this will look like this. So, this is i equal to okay. So, what will be our final integration? This will be limit m tends to infinity then minus ln m e to the power minus ln m minus e to the power minus ln m and this will be this this term will be 0 and this term will be 1 because it, this is e to the power 0 so this will be in effect plus 1 now on the first term here we have to use the limit so m tends to infinity that will also imply ln m tends to infinity and then e to the power minus ln m that will go to 0 because this will be to the power minus infinity and if we look at these two function so this is like in the form of x by e to the power x and limit x tends to infinity you will see that this is equal to 0 this is happening because e to the power x has a very high decay rate compared to x and you can simply use uh, L hospital rule to find out that this is equal to 0. So here the first term is going to 0 and the second term is also going to 0. So this is 0 minus 0 plus 1. So the final answer is 1. So our integration which is denoted as i will evaluate to give the value 1. So let us check the answers, uh, so, sorry, the options, and you will see that the second option is 1, and this is the correct option here. Okay. So I hope you have understood it. Uh, if there is any doubt, please let me know in the chat box, or you can also unmute yourself and ask any questions. If there are not any questions, then I will move to the second problem. Okay, so I don't think there are any questions. So let us see the second problem of today. So this was the answer for problem one. The second problem states that the Cauchy principal value of this integration is same as the Cauchy principal value of the integral given here. So let us denote them as 
i1 and i2 so i1 is minus infinity to infinity x square plus 1 over 1 plus x square then whole square dx and let us denote i2 as 0 to infinity 2x square One plus x square whole square dx. Okay, so we will show that these two integrations are effectively similar. And if these two integrations are similar, then we can effectively say that their Cauchy principal value will also be similar, same, right? So let us start with i1 so what is i1 it is defined here to be minus infinity to infinity x square 1 plus x square whole square dx now you can see that here the integrand is a even function What is the definition of a even function? This is that f of x. I will use some different color. I don't think it will be much visible here. So when f x is equal to f of minus x, then we call f as an even function. Okay, and you will see that the integrand here, which is x square by 1 plus x square whole square of that is an even function and we will use this property for even function and say integration of minus m to m fx ds is equal to 0 to m integration to fx dx how this is true I will show you shortly. Okay. So let us show this by using this integration as a as an example. So I1 I can write it in two terms. One will be from minus infinity to zero x square one plus x square whole square dx and the second one will be from zero to infinity x square. 1 plus x square whole square dx. Now, in the first one here, in this one, substitute y equal to minus x. So, we will have dy equal to minus dx and the limits when limits will also change when x equal to minus infinity y will be equal to infinity and when x equal to 0 y will be equal to also 0. So now we can write them as infinity to 0 then minus y square 1 plus minus y square then whole square then minus dy plus the second term so which is 0 to infinity x square 1 plus x square whole square dx so here this will be minus infinity to 0 y square 1 plus y square whole square dy x square 1 plus x square whole square dx. Now notice here that y and x these are just dummy variables. So when we do the integration it doesn't matter how we represent it. So here we can write y just as x also right. So this will be minus infinity to 0 x square 
1 plus x square whole square okay and here you can see that if you absorb this minus sign here this negative sign here and change the limits then the first term and second term will become identical right then we can write them as this okay so just by using the property of this fx which is a even function we can write the integration i1 uh, like this and if you notice carefully that of the way we have defined i2 this is this is equivalent to i2 or rather this is equal to i2 so we have established that i1 is equal to i2 so the two integrations that were given they are essentially the same so their cosy principal value will also be equal so this is our answer And this means that the statement given here as question number two is actually true. So this is the correct option. Okay. So now we are done with question number two. So please let me know if there are any questions. You can ask me in the chat box or you can also unmute yourself and speak. If there are not any questions, then I will move to the third problem. Okay, I don't think there are any questions, so let us see the third problem. Okay. okay. So here we have been asked whether the integral let us again denote it as i from 1 to infinity e to the power minus x square dx is diverging or converging okay so we do not have to actually evaluate the integration here We do not need to evaluate it we can just uh, deduce whether this is diverging or converging so here i have already plotted these functions so these are some functions and the red one here this is e to the power minus x and the blue one is e to the power minus x square and you can see that in the range 0 to 1 the function e to the power minus x square is higher than e to the power minus x but after that so after x equal to 1 
till x equal to infinity e to the power minus x is actually greater than e to the power minus x square. So this will be for all x greater than 1. Okay. So when we so this is the origin. So when you see this fact that for all x greater than 1 or we can say for all x greater than equal to 1 e to the power minus x is greater than e to the power minus x square then we can use the comparison method to comment on whether the these integrals will be diverging or converging just by looking at the other integration. Okay, so let us do that. So we have for all, so this will be greater than equal to to the power minus x square is less than equal to e to the power minus x. So, integration from 1 to infinity this will also be less than equal to this integration. This is because at every point here in this region from 1 to infinity this uh, quantity e to the power minus x square is less than or equal to e to the power minus x and integration is basically doing summation so here we are just summing all the possible values of e to the power minus x and here we are summing all the possible values of e to the power minus x square so logically we can from this statement we can compare okay so now let us see whether the right hand side is convergent or not Okay, so we can, this is again an improper integral, we can write it like limit m tends to infinity 1 to m e to the power minus x dx. We can simply do this integration as minus of e to the power minus x from 0 to m. Again, limit m tends to infinity. This will be 1 minus e to the power minus m. We can safely say that, okay, sorry, so this was from 1, so this will be 1, so this will be 1 over e, and we can write it like this. And we can safely say that when limit m tends to infinity to the power minus m is going to 0. So this term here will go to 0 and this integration will give us a value of 1 over e. So now we can
look at this statement here. So let us write it as number one. So we can look at number one statement. And we get integration one to infinity e to the power minus x square dx is less than or equal to one over e. So that means this integration here on the left hand side is not diverging. So the integration will converge. So let me write it clearly. Okay, so this is our answer that the given integration converges. So let us quickly see the options here and we will see that the first option is the correct one since this is matching with what we have deduced. So this is correct option. Okay. So please let me know if you guys have any doubt here. Otherwise, I will move to the problem number four. Okay, so I don't see any questions here. So let me go to the next problem, which is problem number four. And here we are given two functions, f and g, which are two odd functions. And then we have to say whether f composed g is also an odd function or not. Okay, so we are on the fourth problem today. Uh, here. So, in the second problem, we uh, encountered a even function, and here what is given as f and g are odd functions. So, let us quickly define odd functions. So, f will be our odd function when f of minus x will be equal to minus of fx and since here f and g both are odd functions then g of minus x will also be minus gx then if f o g is an odd function then we have to prove that so let me write it in a different color. F O G of X is equal to so let me write it as minus X. So F O G of minus X is equal to minus of F O G of X. So let us do this proof quickly. So we'll begin from the left hand side, which is F O G of minus X or it can be also written as f of g of minus x and let me term it as 1 and this as 2. So here we can write this part g of minus x as minus g of x. So this is using 2. And now let us write it as f of y, where y equal to g of x. And we can also write it as 
f of minus f of y using the property 1 here which is this so in two steps we have first used this that the function g is our function and then we have used that the function f is also an odd function now here we can just replace what we have assumed to be y so y is gx so this becomes minus f of gx and we can simply write it as f compose g of x so what this gives us is f o g of minus x is equal to minus f o g of x. So we have proved here this so this is our proof and the statement that f o g is a not function is true. So this is true. Okay. So let us see the options. So as we have reduced it, this is true. Okay, so please let me know if you guys have any doubt here. If not, then I'll move to the problem number five. Okay, so I don't see any questions here. So let us go to problem number five. which states that let f and g be two continuous functions on this interval uh, close bracket a to open infinity with this property that fx and gx both are positive and fx is always less than equal to gx for all value of x greater than a then there is a statement given that integration a to infinity gx dx will diverge if integration a to infinity fx dx diverges so let us write out this problem here so to prove integration a to infinity gx dx diverges given the conditions that if g r continuous in a to infinity for all x greater than a this relation holds okay so if you consider this thing then you will see that this is very much uh, like the third problem that we did today with, with using the comparison method so here also we can invoke that so by comparing fx and gx values in the intervals so we always have fx less than equal to gx for all x greater than a So 
so again we can write it like this for integration e to infinity fx dx is less than equal to integration a to infinity gx dx this is again by taking into account that integration is nothing but doing summation and here our functions are like this so f and g here and x here so suppose this is fx and and this is gx so the point x equal to a somewhere here so after x equal to a fx is always smaller than gx so again by integration we are just doing the summation of these values and we are given here that integration a to infinity fx dx diverges that is it tends to infinity so if we consider this expression here so let us denote it as one so let us check this expression and we will see that lhs is always less than rhs and LHS tends to infinity. So from this and this, we can conclude that integration a to infinity gx dx will also diverge so this is the rhs here the right hand side of this equation one so why this will diverge because the left hand side side is always infinity and if this property is to be true then this the right hand side also has to be infinity or you can say greater than or equal to then in order to satisfy this it also has to diverge right so we have proof proven already that given the conditions in the question a to infinity dx dx diverges with a to infinity fx dx diverging so the statement given here this is true so this is the correct option okay so this is another example of this um, comparison method that i showed also in problem number three okay so please let me know if you guys have any doubt here uh, if not then i'll move to problem number six uh, we are already quite a bit late so please let me know if you have any doubt quickly okay yeah. Ravi Shankar, do you have any questions? 
sir if a function is uh, i mean uh, greater than infinity it will diverge as always yeah if within the integral limit and there is uh, somewhere the function is diverging that then it will always diverge you are right so is this somehow related to the problem we were discussing uh, so sir we need to just check the continuity of the function yeah uh, yeah continuity is given that uh, it is already told that if g are continuous and it is not diverging in the given region where when where we are checking this so you can check the questions here and it says that if g are continuous functions so when this is continuous then we do not have any other way to check but we have to resort to this comparison test so yes sir correct sir yeah. okay so i think do you have any other questions or should i go to the next problem proceed sir okay so so this is problem number 6 and here again we are given with the integration which is this customary we will denote it as i so this is e to infinity 1 over x ln x to the power alpha dx so let me write dx here okay so so we have to check uh, in which of this con for which of these conditions this integration exists finitely or in other words this is converging so we have to check for which values of alpha i converges so let us begin so we can write i as limit m tends to infinity e to the power infinity dx x ln x to the power alpha and we can do this substitution y equal to ln x or x equal to e to the power y then dy will be dx over x or dx will be x dy so and also the limits are also going to change so y so let me write it like this when x is e then y which is equal to ln x that will be equal to 1 and this will be equal to ln m okay so now we can rewrite this in terms of this substituted variables so integration will go from 1 to ln m dx is x dy and there is another x and ln x to the power alpha will be nothing but y to the power alpha so limit m tends to infinity 1 over ln m the x will cancel in the denominator and numerator so this will be just dy y to the power alpha by y to the power alpha so as we can first check that for the value of alpha equal to 1 so for this what will the integration look like it will look like limit m tends to infinity 1 to ln m dy over y and this integration will be ln limit limit m tends to infinity 
log of y one to ln n right as you can see here that this will be nothing but limit m tends to infinity log of log of y minus zero so we can ignore the lower limit here so this will be infinity so for alpha equal to one i diverges so this is a special case when the integration will give log of y as a result for other case so for alpha not equal to 1 we have to do the integration a bit differently so let us do that also the integration in those cases will be limit m tends to infinity 1 to ln m okay to the power minus alpha dy limit m tends to infinity y to the power y minus alpha 1 minus alpha and this will be 1 to ln m right so here we can take 1 over 1 minus alpha common and this will be limit m tends to infinity ln m to the power 1 minus alpha minus 1 okay i hope up to this is clear to all of you now we have to check this first term here so check this term so this is limit m tends to infinity ln m to the power 1 minus alpha what will happen when 1 minus alpha is greater than 0 for this so let us denote it as c so and let us denote this case as 1 so for 1 minus alpha greater than equal to 0 c will be infinity right because limit m tends to infinity ln m take for an example 1 minus alpha equal to v2 then this is diverging since m is going to infinity okay so this condition also cannot hold so alpha less than 1 is also not possible and here we have also deduced that alpha equal to 1 is also not possible so what is the other case that is left so which will be case number 2 and that is for 1 minus alpha less than 0 or alpha minus 1 to be greater than 0 so in that case limit m tends to infinity ln m 1 minus alpha can be written as limit m tends to infinity 1 over ln m to the power k where k is greater than 0 so this is following from this condition here So now this is going to be 0, right? So 
for this case the integration converges and what will be the value of the integration this will be i equal to 1 over 1 minus alpha times minus 1 or we can write it as 1 over alpha minus 1. So, for the case of one minus alpha less than equal less than zero, I converges. Okay, so we can probably write this condition a bit clearly. So let me do it here. One minus alpha less than zero, that is implying that alpha is greater than 1. So, this is the answer and let us quickly look at the options which are given. We will see that the third option is the one that we have deduced here and this is also the correct option. Okay. So, please let me know if you guys have any doubt in question number 6 and then we will move to the other problems. Okay, so I don't think there are any questions. So let us go to the Question number 7, which is again an integration, we will denote it as i. This is from 0 to 3, 1 over x minus 1 dx. So, this is again an improper integral because for x equal to 1, uh, the integrand will diverge. So, we can write it in two terms i1 and i2. So, i1 will be from 0 to 1 minus some thing e to the e, suppose it to be epsilon 1, 1 over x minus 1 dx. And we will also use limitations to 0 and similarly I2 will be Okay, so we can write i as this to integration i1 and i2 and we have to basically find out the value of this. So, this is limit e1 tends to 0 and also epsilon 2 tends to 0 integration dx x minus 1 this is from 0 to 1 minus e1 plus 1 plus e2 So, we can evaluate it.
this will be nothing but log of x minus 1 and the limits are from 0 to 1 minus this and the second integration will also be log of x minus 1 but the limits will be different to 3. So this will be just this. So I hope uh, I have not explained this uh, how to come from this to this but you can easily get it by um, just substituting the limits and these terms will get cancelled out and this is mod so this is also cancelled out so here this will be limit and this term ln 1 we know this is going to 0 now here when we apply the limit epsilon 1 tends to 0 we will see that this term here is going to diverge so this will be minus infinity or diverging similarly if we apply the limit e to the power um, so epsilon 2 tends to 0 then this second term will also be diverging okay so we conclude that the integration diverges and let us check the options here and we will see that the last option is the correct one. Okay. So, if you guys have any questions regarding this, please let me know. Otherwise, I will move to the problem number 8. We will have two more problems to do. So, I don't think there are any questions. So, let us go to the next problem, which is problem number 8. But before we do that, let me also give a statement here that this is a good example, this integration, where you will see that the actual integration is diverging, but the Sorry for my bad handwriting here. The cos C principal value will be finite. So you can take it as a homework to see what the cos C principal value of this integration will be. So with that, let us move to the next question. So here we are to use partial fraction and evaluate this integration. So the integration is 6x plus 7x plus 2 square dx. Okay. So using partial fraction, we can write
we can write the integrand like this. So this will be a over x plus 2 whole square plus b x over x plus 2 whole square times x plus 2. So we can write this expression here and from here we have to find the value of a and b. Okay. So we can quickly do that. So we can cancel out this here and we can write it like this 6x plus 7 is a plus b x plus 2 then this will be 6x plus 7 equal to a plus bx plus 2b so we can compare the minus 5 and 6 yeah so you are right this will be minus 5 and 6 so whoever said that uh, you are correct so for others please let me do it so we can compare the coefficients of x to the power 1 and x to the power 0 which is just 1 and we can write it like this so what will be the coefficient of x to the power 1 on the left hand side this will be 6 and here this is only b so we obtained b equal to 6 and if you put the value of b equal to 6 here will or rather let us compare the coefficient of x to the power 0 which is 7 equal to a plus 2b and let us use this value b equal to 6 here which will give 7 equal to a plus 12 then a will be minus 5 okay so now with this we can do this integration pretty easily so this will be 6x plus 7 over x plus 2 square dx we can write it like minus 5 dx plus dx here i have cancelled one x plus 2 in the denominator and numerator and we can rewrite it probably like this then we can also use the fact that dx is equal to dx plus 2 then we can rewrite this as x plus 2 x plus 2 then the first term will be nothing but ln mod x plus 2 times 6 and second term will be minus of 5 x plus 2 so this will be 2 minus 1 and there will be 1 minus 1 due to integration and then we need to also add the constant so we can simplify this this is 6 ln x plus 2 mod plus 5 over x plus 2 plus c so this is the value of our integration so this is the answer now let us see the options here and we will see that the option 1 is the correct one okay and here they have written it slightly differently so they have just written 1 over x plus 2 to be x 
x plus 2 inverse. So, you guys can do that. So, this is the answer. Okay. So, please let me know if you guys have any doubt here. Otherwise, I will move to the problem number 9. Okay, so let me move to the problem number nine then. Uh, this is a problem where we have to find the region enclosed by the curves y equal to two power minus x and positive x axis. And we have to find the area. So let us quickly draw. So this is x, this is e to the power minus x. So at x equal to 0, this will be 1, and then this will asymptotically decay to 0 at x equal to infinity. So and this is the positive x axis, this side, this one, which is also given by the arrow. So the area under the curve will be this. Right, so let us denote it by a and we can simply write it as from 0 to infinity e to the power minus x minus 0 dx. So, this 0 is actually y equal to 0 and let us call it y1 e to the power minus x. and this to be y2 equal to 0 which is the equation of x axis. So, what will be this integration? This will be 0 to infinity e to the power minus x dx. Again like other improper integrals that we did today, we can rewrite it like this 0 to m and this will be or we can write it as 1 minus limit m tends to infinity e to the power minus m and we have seen again in one of the previous questions that this term goes to 0. So, we will obtain this to be equal to 1 or the area which we denoted by a here. is equal to 1. So, area under the curves is 1. So, this is the answer and let us again check the options given and we will see that the third option is the correct one. Okay, so now we are done with problem number 3 here, sorry problem number 9 here. So, please let me know if you guys have any doubt, otherwise we will move to the last problem. Okay, so I don't think there are any doubts. So let me go to the last problem. And if you have any doubt in any other questions also, which I solved previously, so you can also let me know that uh, when I finish. Okay, so 
let us go to the last problem again this is another improper integral that we have to evaluate so this is minus infinity to infinity 1 over 1 plus x square dx denoted as i so we can write limit m tends to infinity two times zero to m one over one plus x square dx and here we have used the fact that 1 over 1 plus x square is an even function. So you must remember that one of the in one of the previous problem I stated this this statement that for even function where f of x is equal to f of minus x we can if the integration limit is symmetric then we can write it as write it like this so i think in probably problem number two we did that yeah so in this problem we did that uh, we can you, you can just simply follow this procedure uh, change the limits from minus infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity and we can do the substitution as shown here and you will end up with this two factor here. So this is just this formula which I have already stated. So you can do that and then this is our integration. Two times m tends to infinity dx 1 over x square and we are familiar with this integration right this is you you sir 10 inverse x yeah excellent so this is just ten inverse x zero to n so we have to evaluate it from 0 to n. So 1 is 10 inverse m minus 10 inverse 0. What is 10 inverse 0? This is 0. And what will be limit? m tends to infinity 10 inverse pi by 2 sorry and inverse m this will be equal to pi by 2 so i hope you guys also know this so here i have taken only the principal values so if you check the graph of 10 So some, something like this, you will see that it is diverging at many points and it is also 0 at many points. So what I have taken is just uh, the value which is within 0 to pi, okay. So with this two here, we can rewrite this as two times minus zero, and this will be two times pi by two. So this will be pi.
So this is our answer here. So if we check the options, we'll see that the third option is the correct option. Okay. So we are done with all the problems today. So please let me know if you guys have any doubt in any of the problems. If not, then we can end today's session. Uh, sir, please explain this graph once again, 10x graph. Okay, sure, sure. So, you know that uh, 10 pi by 2 infinity goes to infinity. Similarly, 10 3 pi by 2 That is ah, equal to 10 pi by 2 infinity. Yeah. So there are many possible values. So 10 inverse or let us rather say limit m tends to infinity 10 inverse m will have many possible values. So this will be probably pi by 2 plus n pi or 2 n pi whatever I uh, Okay, so for different values of n, this will give different solutions, right? So this is because the functions cos sine they have a period of two pi. So here, yes, sir, correct, sir. Yeah, so you can take many possible values. So what I am take what I have taken here is the values of x, which is in the region zero and infinity. Uh, sorry, zero and pi. Okay, so that's why here. Instead of writing in this part, instead of writing suppose 5 pi by 2, I am writing it as pi over 2. Okay, so what I am saying is that there are many possible values, but uh, when you are taking this, uh, you are doing this integration, you take the principal values, or if you take this value, then corresponding to this, take this. Okay, I I hope I have an answer to doubt. Uh, sir, that uh, x equal to 0 and 0, uh, 2 places uh, in the x axis, there is 0, 0. Oh, this is not x axis. Uh, this is the value of 10 x at these different values. So, for x equal to 0, this is 0, and for other values of there are also other values for which this will be 0. Suppose uh, 10x is sin x by cos x. So we know cos pi by 2 is 0, cos 3 pi by 2 is also 0. Right. Uh, Yeah. Sir, co oh, sorry. Cos 3 by, by 2 is also 0. So, for both these values, this one, this value and this value, 10x is going to infinity, right? Yes, sir, correct, sir. Yeah. So, when you are using this tan inverse x function, just make sure that uh, the answers you are getting is within the range 0 to pi. Okay, then you do not have to worry about this multi valued function. Okay. Yes, sir. Got sir. Okay, okay. Great. So, any other questions, anyone? Okay, so I don't think anyone has any other doubts. So let us end today's live session here. And we will, uh, in this session, those, for those who have joined later, we have discussed the assignment of uh, week six, of which was given in the previous run of this course. And um, we have discussed 10 problems today. And the recorded lecture of this uh, session 
will also be available in YouTube. I will do it by tonight and also these notes will also be uploaded. So if you have missed something, you can follow from there. And if there are any doubts, even after that, you can again ask me in the next class. So bye for today and we will meet next Tuesday to discuss the problems of SNP7. Okay, so bye for today. Thank you for joining. Thank you, sir.